Hey, this is George with MGW. We're going to show you guys how to install a shifter into a C7 Corvette today. First of all, we just want to highlight some of the changes we made due to making this shifter work for the C5, C6, and C7. This is our older design from last year. And there really was no mechanical change. We just did a design change to the upper isolator so that this smaller version can fit better under the boot. The C7 boot's a little smaller than the C5 and C6. We also, due to customer demand, came, went back to the offset design. This allows you to put the shifter at the 7 o'clock position if you want to get better reach, but some guys that have long arms actually want the shifter farther away from them. So you can rotate it 180 degrees and have the shifter over to like the 1 to 2 o'clock position. And it bolts to the lower box the same way. Okay, we're inside our C7 Corvette here. The first step is going to be removing the factory shift knob. Now the C7 is electronic parking brake, so make sure you set the brake before you turn the vehicle off because we will be pulling the shifter in and out of gear and you don't want it to roll back on you. So just like the C6 knob, the C7 knob has the same torque screw underneath the boot and it has the little collar that you turn counterclockwise, about a half turn and pull it way down and you'll expose the little torque screw. It's a number 25. Just put the wrench in there. We'll remove the screw. Make sure you keep the screw if you're going to reuse the factory knob because it will go into the MGW shifter as well. Once the screw's out, knob comes right off. Okay, the next step is to remove the center console lid. We'll pop it open and you'll see the three torque screws. Now these are in number 15 Torx, so we'll get that one and we'll remove these three screws. And it's very important that when you put this console lid back on, these are just like the C6 where they go into like a particle board substructure, so do not get tight on these or you'll strip those screw heads out. One difference between this and the C6 is that once you get the three screws out, there is a little bit of a, it's got like a little tab here that you'll see that pops into this hole. It comes out easily, but you got to make sure that you snap it in like that. So when you pull it out, it takes a little pop out like that. Okay, the next step is to remove this one long trim piece. There are no bolts or screws, it just uses clips, but just be very careful. Start with the front, just kind of grab it here. Pop it out, work yourself to the back, be very careful, don't put too much pressure on it, you don't want to break anything. It pops off and you can see it just uses little spring clips. Okay, the next step is we're going to remove this entire top console piece. You just want to carefully lift up one corner at a time. Work your fingers through here, grab here, lift that up. And then as you tilt it up, and you want to be in fourth gear just to make sure you get a little more room, and just very carefully tilt it up and you'll feel it pop out of there. And you want to just very carefully lift it up because you have a lot of wires here. So we're going to take these connectors apart. You just squeeze the back tabs. You'll feel a tab in the back there. They're a little tricky. Okay, once you get these two taken off, you have enough play to move it a little bit farther over. And you'll see that you have one last one here. This is for your power outlet plug. And you'll notice that on one side, and sometimes it does vary, there's a little tab. And I believe on this one, it's up here on the top. So we're going to get a little Allen wrench, and we're going to stick it inside that little notch and then pull on this silver and blue piece, and it'll pop right out. Okay, so here's our little Allen wrench, and we're going to stick that inside that little pocket there. Push it down, and we can lift that out, and then your console can be completely removed from the car. Okay, the next step is to remove these two connectors inside here. First thing we'll do is we'll wiggle this thing and get it out of this little hole there, and then you want to push down on this tab and pull this apart separate those two 
And then you have another power plug connector here. Same thing, take your Allen wrench, stick it in this little notch right here, and pull the plug out. Okay, now we gotta work on removing this console underpiece here. So we're gonna pop this little tab off with our fingers. Be careful with it, don't break it. And you'll expose two nuts here for 10 millimeter sockets. So you're gonna have two here, up here, you have one right here, and then you have one right here, and then you have two up here at the front. These are black, they're a little harder to see, but there's one here, and there's one here. So we're gonna remove all six of those. Okay, once we get all the, the nuts that hold this bottom piece in place removed, we're going to take this one wire and we're going to pop it out of the hole here. Push this tab, disconnect it, and then we can lift up on the console piece and we'll want to take this wire and just feed it up. And just remember that that wire goes down inside this trough here when we go to reassemble it. It'll go down inside, feed into this little hook, and feed up to the top and connect back into there. For now, we'll just pull this out of the way and get this console out of the way. Okay, the last step is to remove the remaining four hex nuts with the 10 millimeter socket. And this rubber boot is actually the same one that is on the C6 Corvette. And we've had a lot of people ask us over the past couple months if the shifter mechanism has changed on the C7. And we have confirmed with GM that it has not. It's actually the same part number as the 2013 C6 cars. So the shifter mechanism itself is the exact same. So once we get this boot off of here, and as you can see, we've already got our MGW shifter in here. Once we get this boot off of here, that's where we're going to stop the video for the C7 because the rest of the steps are exactly the same for all generations as far as mounting it to the torque tube. One thing I did want to note which is very important is earlier we talked about this, this new design feature of the upper isolator that it was reversible so that you could get the shift knob either closer towards you which is what 90 percent of our customers have chosen but some people want it over here in the one o'clock position if you have long arms that is uh, acceptable for the C5 and the C6s, but you cannot do that on the C7 because even though the shifter looks centered in the console here, they've shifted uh, this whole console. So this thing is too close to the front part of the opening on the actual console piece. So you can only use it in the front facing position. If you put it back here, it will actually hit and uh, interfere with the console. So please note that so that you don't put it all together and then find out when you're trying to put the uh, console on a C7 only back on that it has interference. Always put it in the front facing position. And after you get everything installed, you can go ahead and uh, reassemble the console just reversing the steps that we just went through.